Hello students. So this year's GS mains paper, especially in GS paper 1, we see that how the questions on society, they have taken a very dominant position and the questions are in the tune of almost 100 to 110 marks. And that is a big thing. And the kind of questions that UPSC has put forward, they are not very, uh, you can say, traditional kinds of question. I mean, they have uh, used certain terms like globalization and all, which is directly in your syllabus. But even in that, they have tried to integrate the topics. They have gone for understanding your basics, but at the same time, they are expecting you to integrate those concepts with the emerging issues, etc. So, uh, in this discussion, we are not going to discuss model answers or anything. It is just to bring forth the importance of reading newspapers and doing your NCRTs correct. Now, why I, I say that, we will see meanwhile. First, if you see the questions like demographic winters and all, see this term is not directly mentioned in your NCRT. But when you do Indian society book of NCRTs, uh, your class 12th book whereby they have actually talked about your uh, uh, demographic transition theory they have used lot of uh, demographic pyramids and all and they have also given a very uh, graphic representation of how within India also there are two kinds of India one India is experiencing the stabilization in fact decline in fertility rates so much so that the states like Kerala and all, they are below the total fertility uh, replacement level. And there are few urban pockets in India that have actually seen the decline of sex ratio, the decline of fertility to such an extent that they are almost comparable to the developed world, which we say Japan and all. But in between, there are debates around, say, for example, whether should we have two child norm or uh, like recently China, it, it is uh, again asking its citizens to go for three children instead of one or two. So all these debates are emerging debates and every now and then you will keep reading news uh, articles on them in newspapers. So for example, demographic winter. Even before this term became famous or even before they started asking questions, uh, uh, it became a dominant theme. There have been books written on it. For example, what to expect when no one is expecting America's coming demographic disaster. It's by Jonathan V. Last. Now, all these books, you can just read a review if it's possible with you. The Hindu also comes up with regular book reviews and they have also started giving the very uh, 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 important concepts that can be used. For example, recently Hindu came up explaining what is harm principle. Now, it, it can be expected that these are the core humanities concepts and can be expected uh, only in your optional subjects. But if Hindu is trying to cover these things, if the newspapers are trying to cover these concepts, there is no problem in reading them because it will eventually help you with your essays also you can pick some good language some good quotations and all now another book similarly on demographic winter is the age of decay and this is also talking about that how aging and shrinking population could usher in decline of civilization now in such questions irrespective of the fact that it was 10 marker 15 marker you should always try to make diagrams and all because in your NCRT itself they have given demographic pyramid they have given the demographic transition theory in a beautiful graphical format so in order to enhance and these are very uh, you can say low hanging fruits if you are using all these graphs if you are able to use the terms like dependency ratio replacement level total fertility rate etc so on and so forth you are definitely going to fetch good marks in your 10 marker okay these are very quick marks so see, this is the demographic transition that you can tell that as a society progresses, it is a natural corollary that eventually they will go for the demographic winter. And demograph when I say demographic winter, it means both. It means reducing fertility, the reducing uh, uh, 
रिप्रोडक्टिविटी एक्सेप्ट बट एट द सेम टाइम राइज ऑफ एजिंग पॉपुलेशन तो यहाँ विंटर से यू कुड टेक अ वाइल्ड गेस्ट दैट विंटर इज एक्चुअली इम्प्लाइंग ओल्ड एज एजिंग पॉपुलेशन एंड एट द सेम टाइम इट ऑल्सो मीन्स श्रिंकिंग पॉपुलेशन बिकॉज इन मोस्ट ऑफ द ग्लोबल नॉर्थ दे आर एक्सपीरियंसिंग दिस नाउ यू कैन ब्रिंग अबाउट अ फ्यू डेटा ऑन इंडिया ऑल्सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल बाई ऑलमोस्ट टू थाउजेंड एटीन टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन इंडिया इज ऑल्सो रीचिंग टी एफ आर ऑफ टू पॉइंट एट टू पॉइंट जीरो एट विच इज विच इज सिमिलर टू द रिप्लेसमेंट लेवल ओके तो यू कैन ब्रिंग ऑल दीज डेटाज एंड एंड यू कैन ऑल्सो इम्फोसाइज अपॉन द इम्पोर्टेंस तो बाय पॉपुलेशन मैटर्स नाउ इफ दे आर सेम डेमोग्राफिक विंटर सी इट इज अ मोस्टली ग्लोबल नॉर्थ विच इज एक्सपीरियंसिंग डेमोग्राफिक विंटर दैट इज वाई यू सी दैट रिसेंट एग्जाम्पल्स इंडिया सेंडिंग लेबर फोर्सेज टू इजराइल एंड ऑल दैट बिकम्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वाई दिस क्वेश्चन माइट हैव बीन आस देर वॉज अ राइट अप इन इकोनॉमिस्ट मैगजीन वेयर इन दे टॉक अबाउट दैट population explosion is a myth and worldwide they are experiencing lot of shortages labor shortages worker shortages and especially the countries in global north but supposedly if this question wasn't discussed it was critically analyzed then do you think that calling the whole world experiencing demographic winter is a rational thing to do not exactly and even today global south experiences high intensity of poverty and all high population growth africa south asia etc so this is a very eurocentric concept if you will see of demographic winter so you can bring about all these aspects and going forward what kind of question can be expected in in your next exams uh the debate on two child norm in india okay a lot of states have started making it compulsory that if you do not have if you do have more than two children and all then you won't be eligible for certain government benefits certain government jobs etc so on and so forth now you can pick all these topics and issues from here itself so demography population etc is a very hot topic for upsc okay see you could have made all these demographic pyramids and all it would have fetched you good marks now second question why do large cities tend to attract more migrants than smaller towns discuss in the light of conditions in developing countries now this is a very straight forward question that because of push and pull factors it is the cities which uh, lead to uh, urbanization migration and all but then again this question is talking about discuss in the light of conditions in developing countries now there are two three topics which relate to your urbanization process one is rural ur uh, urban continuum got it second is development of slums and all third is ghettoization and all all this can be used in this particular topic okay and you can also come up with data also also i would like you to i would like every uh, future aspirant who wants to have a, a very uh, factful uh, uh, understanding of what is happening in india i would like to recommend one book this book is by rukmini s whole numbers and half truth and this is an amazing book even for those who want to take sociology as an optional and those people who want to use lot of data and tacts and arguments to support their answers in in generally society paper so this book deals a lot with how is urbanization happening in india how is the food habits changing in india how is the marriage practices changing in india they have used lot of authentic surveys and datas okay so i would definitely recommend this book if you can go for it uh, you can get data from there also the next question distinguish between gender equality gender equity and women's empowerment why is it important to take gender concerns into account into program design and implementation okay now this question uh is a very basic they are trying to understand make you uh, uh, take a uh, an, in order to understand how much you understand concepts related to empowerment affirmative action so on and so forth now this question is basically with regard to gender mainstreaming okay gender mainstreaming is a very uh, a latest uh, tool of public policy and all and in that they you can achieve that through all these things women empowerment equity and equality now see this 
क्वेश्चन इज नॉट आस्किंग यू द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन इक्वालिटी इक्विटी एंड वीमेन्स एम्पावरमेंट बट इट वुड बी बेटर इफ यू इन योर आंसर इफ यू राइट इफ यू डिफाइन देम बट एट द सेम टाइम इस्टैब्लिश अ रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन दीज थ्री कॉन्सेप्ट बिकॉज वेन यू आर डूइंग सो देन ओनली यू कैन गो एंड टेल दैट सी दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑल्सो अबाउट जेंडर मेन स्ट्रीमिंग एंड वेन वेन वी वी डूइंग सोसाइटी क्लासेस एट शुभ्रंजन I gave this gender equality continuum tool, and this question is somewhat related to this: that in any society, the progression of policy generally moves from being exploitative towards transformative. This should be the goal of gender transformation or doing any policy. And see, they have asked this question: why it is important to take gender concerns into account in program design and implementation? Got it? So. think beyond i mean uh, please read your newspapers since two days in hindu itself they are giving a new data and new analysis on how women overwork in it sector and all so you can pick all those data points from there and you can start imagining what kind of questions can be built there okay so this gender equality continuum tool this all could have been used in your answer okay moving forward inter caste marriages between castes which has socio economic parity have increased to some extent but this is less true of inter religious marriages now this question might look very straight forward but see again i am taking reference of that book whole number half truths thereby it, it according to your census also and they did some survey also as good as in 2019 and 2020 what they have found is that indian are getting married the same way their grandparents were getting married that means most of the indians even today prefer getting married within the caste and most of the indians are averse to the idea of inter religious marriages it is picking up it is generally an urban phenomena you can give all the reasons but then why this question is in being is being asked so in this answer if you are able to bring about some mentioning about special marriage act because this topic was very much in in last one year in fact there is a petition which is uh, going on that uh, how much this is valid in uh, the requirements in special marriages act whereby you have to give a notice you have to serve a notice of one month and all so how much this is relevant so ye answer me if you are able to bring in that aspect also you will definitely get better marks okay and this this data you can also give a counter side to this that irrespective of rising urbanization and rising uh, autonomy for women but even today most of india generally gets married how their grandparents used to get married that means even with our with your inter uh, inter caste marriages also there is a slight increase but nothing has changed much okay then you can also bring in certain uh other aspects for example that in india uh generally marriages are governed by your personal laws okay even we have hindu marriage act and all but they are based basically on your personal laws then there are certain religions which prohibit inter religion marriages for example is in islam okay they differentiate between uh, kitabia marriage and non kitabia marriage and all and uh, because of that Uh, uh they they generally consider uh, inter religious marriages void ab initio and all so that aspects can be bring, uh, brought forth in in your answers okay now next question what is regional disparity how does it differ from diversity how serious is the issue of regional disparity in india now see here are two key terms regional disparity and diversity now these terms are defined in your ncert diversity is basically coming from difference now first you pick the key terms and define what is difference now difference is not problem the problem is when you start adding values to differences got it similarly diversity is not a problem managing diversity is a challenge okay now why they could have picked this question so see in fact this uh, article was again discussed in class whereby uh, this is an article by uh, arvin subramaniam uh, and uh, 
he has actually given a very explosive ex explosive line that southern states make more money while northern states make more babies got it so this is all the aspect of regional disparity and diversity in india and you could have definitely written better answer if you have ever tried to gather some data because see even when the debate on federalism and gst collection and all is going on somewhere down the line this is a debate of the disparities existing in indian polity indian society indian setup okay so see this uh, graph and diagram and surprisingly uh, the day this paper was happening there was an article a day before uh, in the hindu also whereby the prime minister's economic advisory council they came out with a working paper where they where they they have used the existing data especially in the post lpg period that how disparities or how states have fared throughout in india okay so see they have uh, make made illustrations and they have given the example of southern india they have given example of north india in fact in in neighbor states also for example they have compared punjab haryana they have compared bengal uh, uh, west bengal and odisha also so see if you had any inkling if you if you kept reading newspapers if you could have picked a lot of new ideas for answer writing got it so it's a humble request that please keep reading newspapers it it won't take much time like it hardly takes 30 40 minutes at least you will be abreast of what kind of issues and questions can be picked from here and there see this this is a very short read of some 17 pages i will definitely suggest because now next year they can ask you a question uh, maybe in paper 3 that how does or how uh, indian states have performed uh, after the uh, liberalization period uh, or give a comparative analysis of um, performance economic and societal performance of state in the post lpg era got it so this is how you have to you can frame your own questions because then you can also pick something from here that how green revolution has affected differently different states so punjab and haryana almost they were at the same uh, they have started the same trajectory in fact haryana was uh, uh, behind punjab but eventually it is haryana which is picked up and punjab has remained a lagat state see these all graphs and all okay and then this globalization question it is expected always they keep asking one question on globalization how to you had to pick these things then relationship with family personal freedom and all here you could have defined all these things now in order to make your answer more relevant you could have picked the emerging concepts like time poverty which women undergo and uh, you you could have picked that despite women participation how their labor force participation rate is decreasing and all all these things can be included in your answer got it and the last question critically analyze the proposition that there is a high correlation between india's cultural diversities and social margin socio economic marginalities now the key term here is critically analyze that means what you can also disagree with the statement or you can also bring forth certain pro aspects whereby diversity is not leading to marginality rather diversity is helping and the people who are who may be at the margin they are in fact more mainstream and all got it and here the one prominent uh, concept that you can use in your answer writing is of intersectionality got it and we we do all these topic because a lot of students might feel that these uh, concepts are from optionals and all no the see the kind of questions that are being asked upsc is expecting you to go beyond the notes and all which are available in market theek hai aapko you will have to go for a deeper understanding so that you can start framing your own question okay so this is all from my side on the society section and uh, we actually do all these thing in, in at shubhra ranjan uh we go a little deeper in indian society section nobody was expecting that something in in the range of 100 to 110 marks would come in indian society section but they asked and they have asked and they are expecting you to think deeper got it so please focus on it this is a very low hanging fruit but it will need some kind of extensive reading of 
one newspaper and your NCRTs and the class notes. So this is all from my side. I hope that you will pick some cues from the discussion and you will try to broaden your horizon in preparing Indian society section. Thank you. Have a good day.